What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Hero vs. Zero Season 5. This is the finale where we're going to talk about the results, we're going to go over the most recent challenge, and of course, I'm not alone. I'm joined by one of the original heroes who subscribed back when I only had 30 subscribers, and the original 3-row champion himself, king of the first three seasons of Hero vs. Zero. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Oh boy, that one, that was a real doozy. Hi friends, it's me, Nate. I'm really trying to get creative, Nate, so... You know, I, I think... I feel like you nailed it this season. Thank you. E everyone, everyone, every little introduction, you uh, take me by surprise. <laughs> Just waiting for somebody to make a compilation of them, so after six or seven <laughs> seasons of Hero vs. Zero, there's gonna be like a three-minute YouTube video out there that's all of Nick's introductions of Nate in Hero vs. Zero, and it's just gonna be the wildest phrases. <laughs> That'll be that'll be a good laugh. But anyways, um, let's start talking about this past challenge because there's quite a bit to say, and more importantly, there are quite a few runs to show on screen, and I don't want to have to shrink them so they're like super super fast and really give each of them, uh, you know, plenty of time to run through. And the challenge itself um, was was really tough. It's a difficult level of Mega Man Zero Three. Um, and there were a lot of tools available to players in terms of Cyber Elves, EX skills, uh, different types of movement, different strategies for the boss, whatever it may be, even different equipment. And what we were really looking for was, can you get an S rank? Um, can you defeat the level? And can you do it while demonstrating knowledge of the different tools you have available and utilizing them effectively to accomplish that task? And we were really impressed with all the different runs because as diverse as the tools were, the, the runs were equally diverse, and each player really went about things quite a bit differently, and it was really fun to watch as a result. And it's worth noting that some of these runs were really airtight close in how they're being evaluated, and it was really difficult for Nate and I to come to some decisions. But before we get into the top three, let's talk about some of the people who participated, uh, namely Beachamp. Unfortunately, did not get third place this week. I know, I know, Bible thumps. Uh, tears. I know, right? Tears all around. Uh, B Champ has been ousted from his third place position this week, unfortunately, but was able to participate in the challenge, which is always great. Shows some excellent sportsmanship, so thank you, B Champ, for participating. And then we also had a completion of the Nick difficulty. Always sounds weird. Um, so thank you, Tapris, <laughs> for doing that. Uh, again, Tapris is an excellent platformer. Nate and I know him well for a lot of classic Mega Man platforming, so it was really interesting to see how he performed in the context of Mega Man Zero, as opposed to classic Mega Man. And of course, it was quick. Um, just a little bit low on enemies killed, to a little bit too low to get that S rank. And then, and then we have four more runs, and they all were Nate difficulty completions. And this is where we'll get into our top three. So in third place, we have Nyrock, or Beth, who had a 97p run with two minutes in two minutes and six seconds. Now, it's really important to say that this run is very clean, and like all the other runs that were completed, it has its highlights, it also has its lowlights, and one of the runs that was incredibly similar to and being evaluated against Nyrock's run was Risa's run, which was the fourth place run. A 97p rank with 2 minutes and 11 seconds for the completion. Part of what's interesting is there are certain techniques that were used throughout the entirety of the level. For example, the heal skip in the boss fight, meaning you prevent a copy X from healing um, his HP and consequently taking longer during the battle. In fact, both Nyrock and Risa got this heal skip. However, Nyrock's run was significantly shorter um, in the boss fight, whereas Risa's was shorter during the actual platforming segment. So what were some other things that were actually different? Well, you'll see on the results screen for both of them that while the runs were both 97p and thus S rank, Nyrock's run was 2 minutes and 6 seconds, as opposed to 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Nyrock also completed or defeated 38 enemies as opposed to 34 enemies, and Nyrock took 20, was it 21 or 23 points? I think 23 points of damage as opposed to 25 or, or 23. Two points less than Reese's run. And at the end of the day, 
that was what we relied on for this very, very close decision between the two. Because again, the, the platforming and the boss fight, each of them has their own strengths in, in their runs. And so it's, I really encourage you to watch both of them. Of course, I'm trying to display them on screen right now, hopefully not too shrinked and too sped up. <laughs> but as always, those runs will be available in the description below. So do check them out. Um, this game is tough and both of these runs were an accomplishment, but congratulations to Nyrock who got and really earned third place. It's also worth noting that this is Nyrock's first placement in the podium throughout the entire season. She has participated in every single challenge and has completed the Nick difficulty sometimes and participated sometimes, but this is truly an accomplishment uh, for the Nate difficulty. And <laughs> I actually um, promised her that I would play Soma on the channel. <laughs> if she <laughs> made it into the top three. It was really funny. I mean, it was one of those conversations where she was like, I'm going to try really hard and I'm really, you know, working at it. And she's like, if I make it into the top three, like, would you like play Soma and like kind of strike, you did like strike through text on Discord. And I was like, sure. And I told her afterwards, I didn't really think she'd do it, but she proved me wrong. So, so Soma's come to the channel confirmed. All right, moving on to second place. <laughs> Nate. Um, so, in second place, we have Ben. Now, Ben's run was super duper clean. Um, judging just by the Copy X fight alone, it's very clear that he learned a lot about the stage. Um, I could tell straight away what kind of combo and setup he was going for with um, using a technique with the recoil rod known as Thousand Slashes. Uh, it does seem like he didn't quite get the pattern he was going for with Copy X. Um, but still, he demonstrated that he learned a decent amount uh, of the game with the use of various X skills and Cyber Elves, um, and overall, a really clean run. He got a... oh gosh, I lost it. I think it was 98p in 2 minutes and 13 seconds. Interestingly, slower than the 3rd and 4th place runs, but yes. overall, higher uh, score. Yeah. Thanks for the save, Nick. Oh, always. Always I don't know what I do. I don't know what I'd do without you, buddy. <laughs> um, but in first place, Nick, can I get a drum roll, please? Oh, yes. In first place, we have DNC. Now, DNC's run is... Whew, this run. It's, it's a run. It's an excellent run. It was 100 points in 1 minute and 18 seconds. Um, very fast run. Fastest by about a minute or so. Mm -hmm. um, also, e very clean just like Ben's, um, showed that he had learned a decent amount of the game, uh, used EX skills, and used the charge of the recoil rod uh, to get up the vertical climb very quickly. Uh, ben did this too, but DNC executed it quicker. Um, he also uh, had a very good copy X fight. Now what was different I noticed about uh, DNC's run and Ben's run um, is that it seemed like Ben had a strat he was going for and he was just going to try and execute the strat which would have been very quick and a very good strat. Um, with DNC it seemed like he learned what Copy X could do, what his patterns were and he would play reactively. So after the first combo he backs off, lets X slide under him and he sees what he does from there, dash and you know he uh, kind of reacts to what X is doing, which on paper probably is a little slower, but in execution it uh, secured a clean fight and meant that he got a overall much quicker run. Um, he also got the heal skip, which saves a lot of time. Yeah, it was, a, it was a super clean run. And I think something that's really interesting is just when you watch DNC's run, they, uh, they're just dashing right from the very first frame. Just instantly dashing, dashing, dashing all over the place. The pace of the run, you just feel how much faster it is. Um, it's in a league of its own compared to the other runs. So uh, DNC really earned the first place this time around. And that's the second week in a row that DNC has actually gotten the first place. So, so congratulations to DNC for that. And with regards to the point totals, um, there's nothing that's too different from previous weeks. A regular Nate level completion, or Nick completion is two points, uh, participation is one point, Nate difficulty completion is three points, third place gets four points, second place gets five points, and first place gets six points. So again, um, congrats to all the people that made it to the top three, congrats to all the people that 
completed the challenge either on the Nick or Nate difficulty and thank you to everybody who participated because again um, these challenges are certainly fun to come up with but they're only significantly more fun when people actually participate in them so with that being said having all of the challenges completed I think we're ready for some final results oh I'm excited I know right Again, all those people at home that are watching and don't know the results sitting there with their popcorn, unlike everybody who has joined the Discord um, and has already <laughs> compared their point totals and probably knows the end results. But um, yeah, let's, let's hop into it. So we'll start our way from the bottom up. In 11th place, I know very few people were expecting this person to place this low. He's truly a gaming prodigy. So in fact, it's Really, every other participant is just lucky that he didn't give as much of an effort as he could have. We have the doofus himself, Alex Bidoofus, with a single point for participating in the Pokemon tournament. <laughs> Let's go, Alex. <laughs> I know, Alex. Alex, stay strong. Um, in 10th place, we have Renee, who had three points from participating in three different challenges. Renee's a great sport, um, great positive person to have around in all of these challenges, so thank you, Renee, for participating when you were able to. And then tied for eighth place we have siege of pancake um, with six points who completed the nick difficulty for the first three challenges but unfortunately hasn't participated in the most recent two and then we have stefo who only participated and won the super meat boy challenge just <laughs> just like felt like flexing oh yeah super meat boy that's that's my jam smash nah pokemon nah panel upon nah mega man zero nah but meat boy oof and uh that was a clean meat boy run so Excellent job, Steffo, and really hope to see you participate in more challenges in the future because it's it's very clear you've got those uh, those gamer skills. <laughs> and then that was that was eighth place, right? Pop quiz, Nate. Were you paying attention? Um, <laughs> uh... Oof, failure. All right, so I think <laughs> next up is seventh place, um, which is going to be Tapris with a total of eight points. Tapris participates. Participated in the last three challenges, completed the Nate difficulty twice, and then most recently with Mega Man Zero got a Nick difficulty. Um, it was really impressive. I mean, I expect Tapris to do well in all of the platforming ones, but he also did well in the Panel to Pawn challenge um, without doing the RNG manipulation as well. So that's really impressive. And of course, Tapris is somebody that also goes way back in my YouTube history, so it's nice to see him around. <laughs> Nate's as well, presumably. Yeah. So. Next up is a tie for 5th place, which is going to be, first of all, Nyrock, the 3rd place, uh, not, not champion, but <laughs> medalist, I guess, <laughs> from the Mega Man Zero Challenge, who commendably has participated in every single challenge this season. Um, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of learning new games, trying out different strategies, and adapting to them on the fly with each week, and so great job you know participating in every single one uh, she completed the eight difficulty um, for this very last one completed the Nick difficulty for a couple of them and just participated in a couple of them as well and thank you again for for doing that every single week and then tied with Nyrock is Leo who performed really quite well in the few that uh, he did participate in he didn't participate in smash or zero but he completed the Nate difficulty for panel the pawn he also came in second place for the Pokemon tournament, which is usually one of the more difficult challenges to do well in because there's so many participants. So that's that's really impressive. And then completed the Nick difficulty for the Meat Boy challenge, which also again is, is still an impressive feat. So thank you again, Leo, for participating. Again, a long time here for Zero veteran. And then we're getting closer and closer to that top three. In fourth place, we have oh no, Nate, are you ready? I'm ready. I know. It's B-Champ in fourth place. I'm so sad. Ah, Throughout the whole ah. season, B-Champ was holding that third place position strong, but it's in this last week that B-Champ slipped into fourth place. Duh, um, you hate to see it. I know, it's so sad, but B-Champ's a great sport. B-Champ is a first time Hero vs. Zero participant this season, so it was excellent to have him around. And he completed the Nate difficulty, uh, for every single challenge except for this last one and even got I think third place or tied for third place in um, the Pokemon tournament which is impressive in and of itself and then maybe for Panel to Pond too I think so yeah Panel to Pond was like 17 or 18 seconds or something small like that so yeah 
Um, excellent job to be champ. We always joke, obviously, about your third place placements, but it takes a lot to get third place in all of these different challenges across the board when you have people that are, you know, really skilled at these games participating too. So, great job. And then, it's time for the final three names. Oh, I'm excited. Now I'm it's my so turn. Excited. Can you uh, can you give me a drum roll, please? Of course. Here we go. Oof, only the best drum rolls. In third place, <laughs> we have DNC. DNC really coming from out of nowhere and placing incredibly well in Hero vs. Zero. Uh, they didn't even participate in the first two challenges, not the Smash Challenge or the Pokemon Tournament, but then played Super Meat Boy and got second place behind only the great Super Meat Boy challenger himself, Steffo. And then it came in first place for the fourth and fifth challenges in Panel Upon and Mega Man Zero 3. And especially um, with Mega Man Zero 3, that run was just like on a whole nother level. So DNC has a really promising future in Hero vs. Zero when that next season comes out. And I'd be really excited to see um, what they're able to do when they participate in every challenge. And this, as we said in the very first episode, also demonstrates the importance of participation points. Um, because DNC is at 17 points, B Champ was at 15 points, and then you'll see that DNC is not too far away from our top two competitors. So, um, yeah, excellent job, DNC. Hopefully, see you around in future seasons too. And congratulations on having the most individual challenge victories out of any participant. Um, because they won the last two events, Defo won the third, and then. Each of our remaining uh, contestants won one of the first two challenges. So, it's finally time for second place. In second place, we have Risa with a whopping 21 points. And Risa is an incredible competitor. She is constantly putting forth so much effort, not just into the challenges themselves, but cultivating the atmosphere of Hero vs. Zero, inviting people into the particip into participating in these challenges, helping each other out with new strategies, etc., and is a great spirit to have around in this competitive but still collaborative environment. And um, Risa did really well in so many of the challenges. Came in, or coming in second place for the Smash Challenge, winning the Pokemon Tournament, which is a very difficult challenge to place well in, completing the Nate difficulty for the Super Meat Boy Challenge, which was really tough. It was a really stiff competition this time around because of how skilled everyone was. And then coming in second place for Panel to Pwn, and that was quite the feat. I know we talked about it during that week, but the battle between DNC and Risa to get those low times in Panel to Pwn was was insane and really fun to watch. And then, in um, this final week with Mega Man Zero 3, was able to complete the Nate difficulty, and so has a 21 point total. And with that, Nate, we finally get to our first place participant. Oh boy. Oh boy. We have none other than Ben. Ben, the incumbent winner from the previous Hero vs. Zero season, has now attained a second championship and is slowly, but certainly, approaching the three-row title that Nate holds today. <laughs> I wonder if he'll do it. I wonder if he'll do it too. But he just barely edged out this victory, winning the first Smash Challenge, completing the Nate difficulty, actually no, not completing the Nate difficulty, but doing mid-ground in the Pokemon tournament, there wasn't a Nate difficulty, um, getting third place in the really intense Super Meat Boy competition, and then getting second place in each of the last two competitions. Um, notably tying with Risa in the Panel to Pwn challenge, because they had the exact same time, and then coming in second for this Mega Man Zero 3 challenge, which just goes to show how intense these last two weeks have been in terms of the competition, and how important each of those individual rankings was, given that Ben only has a point total of 22 points, just one point more than Risa in second place. And I guess I should also note that both Ben and Risa obviously participated in all of every single challenge, and that requires a lot of sustained effort and flexibility and adaptive gaming skills. So um, great job to both of you for that. And again, congrats, Ben, on winning this season. It's, it's not an easy feat. So, yeah. Um, and with that in mind, I'd like to say thank you again to every single person who participated. 
again, as, as we mentioned earlier, these challenges are fun to come up with, they're fun to do ourselves, but what makes Hero vs. Zero fun is that you guys do them and have fun doing the challenges with each other and showing us what we couldn't see in them in the first place, for better or worse, I think, in the case of Panel to Pond. <laughs> um, and overall, I think this is a really fun season. Um, participation was a bit lower than the previous season, unfortunately. However, those who did participate brought a lot of fervor with them and um, it made for a really fun time. The challenges themselves were quite cool. Smash and Pokemon, uh, I thought we had some pretty interesting formats. Of course, making them accessible and, you know, now staples in the Hero vs. Zero series. Um, and then the games themselves towards the end, Super Meat Boy was a big favorite amongst people um, and is a great platformer. Paneled upon a puzzle game that really require, or deserves a lot more attention than it gets and I think pushed people to think in terms of you know, gaming challenges a little bit differently. And then Mega Man Zero 3, a platformer that requires very different platforming skills from Super Meat Boy, has a very different physics system, has a lot more creativity that you can put into the, the platforming, the equipment customization, etc. So yeah, and of course, always happy to have another Mega Man game. So it's very happy with how the games turned out and excited to think about what's coming next. What do you think about the different challenges from this season, Nate? Um, I was a big fan. Um, I do, I do we're like we're quite biased towards platforming, you know, especially Mega Man mm -hmm. games. But I think it was pretty cool to challenge different skill sets between Meat Boy and Mega Man Zero. Mm -hmm. Meat Boy doesn't really have, you know, that kind of focus on, you know, a boss fight or like combat, but it does require um, some incredibly tight platforming, maybe more so than Mega Man Zero. Um, you know, for different reasons. And I think it was really cool to see that difference in people's runs. Um, for me, I gotta say, I think the highlight was the Panel the Pawn challenge. <laughs> Waking up each day and seeing, you know, DNC or Risa scratch off uh, an extra second and that super intense back and forth. That was so much fun to watch. Yeah, it was, um, it was really impressive seeing what all of you were able to do uh, throughout the season. So again, thank you for, for really pushing the limits with these challenges. And this is also where we like to open up the, the YouTube comment section, the uh, <clears throat> Discord, where <laughs> we're open to feedback on this season, right? What did you guys think of the challenges? Were they too difficult? Were they too easy? Were they in games you don't care about? Were they really difficult to play because you couldn't emulate them or couldn't buy them or whatever it may be? Again, the principles we work with are games that we think are really fun, test different skill sets and are still accessible either via emulation, via widely available games, um, or games that have really sold well over generations, like in the case of you know, Smash Bros, or games that are particularly cheap and Nate and I have even you know, picked up a few copies of Super Meat Boy for that challenge. So. If you guys have any feedback, um, that's always appreciated. If you guys have suggestions for future games, um, we're always, you know, we have our ears open. It'll probably be months before the next season, so no need to feel rushed to come up with suggestions before there's like a deadline or something. And yeah, um, it's always a little bit sentimental, you know, at the end of a Hero vs. Zero season, because it really is a month long, or, you know, a month and a half, almost two month long endeavor every single week to go through the different runs, to come up with the challenge, to talk about the rules, to see the different levels of competition, and really be excited about how things are going to turn out. But I think I think that's all we're going to say for, for this season. So again, thank you. Uh, congratulations to the top three, and congratulations to Ben for winning, and really congratulations to everybody who participated and at least got to play a game they like in a new manner, or learn about some game they hadn't played and enjoyed it. But until the next season of Hero vs. Zero, this is Moon Knight Zero. And Nate. And patience is a virtue. <laughs>